Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Today we gather on the day of Pentecost, usually, as, usually a day built around the story of that first Christian community that gathered 50 days after the day of the resurrection. And it's a story about a great mighty rushing wind coming upon the disciples and other people witnessing this miraculous, mysterious, powerful moment of Holy Spirit. And of course, we give thanks for that moment and celebrate that moment. But it's such a rare moment when something like that happens. So today I would like to, yes, celebrate and rest in Holy Spirit, but look at the other two stories that were given today about ways Holy Spirit works in the world and in our lives. The first story is the story from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet when the capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem, was, was destroyed. And not just the buildings are destroyed, but they felt like their spiritual life had been destroyed. And so you can understand why God gives Ezekiel this vision of the dry bones. Ezekiel gets a vision of bones scattered across a valley floor, bones of people, bones scattered about and disconnected all over this probably field of battle. And that's not just a literal vision, it's a vision of their spiritual lives as well. Their whole lives, their souls are scattered and dried up across the valley floor. And into this vision, God's voice comes and tells Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. Ezekiel says, can these bones even live? Prophesy to these bones. And he gives Ezekiel commandments to command the bones to come together. And punctuated throughout this reading are three words. You shall live. And it's not this kind of you shall live that you might say to your child after they fall and skin their knee and you say, oh, you'll live. I don't even think it's the kind of you shall live that a doctor might tell a patient who is struggling with some difficult disease where, where they say, y you will live. I think it goes even deeper than that. And God is saying through Ezekiel time and time again, you will live, you will find life, you will thrive once again to the people of Israel. You will live. And for us, that's one of the ways that the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit comes at those times in our lives when our own personal life or the lives of those around us are like scattered dry bones across the valley floor. And we feel like we're totally disassembled, totally at odds. We don't, we don't know if we're going to make it. Are we going to get through this? And this promise from Ezekiel, this Holy Spirit promise, echoes down throughout the millennia and says, you shall live. Though you feel dried up and scattered. So many have described that moment. I've had those moments in my life where Somehow, mystically, it wasn't the sound of a rushing wind, but I could hear that voice, and I knew it was true. You shall live. 
The second story we hear today is another one of those stories we've been hearing all during Easter season about Jesus teaching his disciples before he leaves. And this one is astounding. We already heard about God is love, another three words. This teaching is astounding because Jesus says, I have things to teach you that you can't bear right now but you will be able to in the future, and I will send the Holy Spirit to continue to teach you throughout your life, throughout your ministry, whatever it is. You will continue to learn. Sometimes I think when our lives come apart, we're actually the fortunate ones because then we cry out to God and we're open to God uh, sending the Holy Spirit. We're open to whatever the Holy Spirit can do to to give us life back again. But for most of our lives, when we're pretty in control and we may feel pretty much like we've got it together, we may not be open to how the Spirit would lead us. But it's this teaching of Jesus that speaks to us in our everyday life, throughout our entire life. Early in John's Gospel, Jesus meets with a teacher of the law, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, being a teacher of the law, knows the great traditions of God's work in the world. Nicodemus knows how the, how the Jewish people have ordered their lives so that they might be holy. But, as the story says, they meet in the dark. Nicodemus is still in the dark. And what is he in the dark about? He's in the dark about is that the answers that have worked for him in his life to bring him this far in life as a teacher of the law, those answers don't go far enough. They don't lead Nicodemus to true life. In order for Nicodemus, the great teacher of the law, to find life, he has to be willing, I think, to disassemble some of the things he knows, some of the things that keep him alive, surviving, so that he can take another step, so that he has to let go of what he thinks about the Messiah when he sees Jesus, because he has to be able to see Jesus for who he is before he can move on and grow deeper in the Spirit of God. And I think that speaks to us. We're so good at figuring out our lives that sometimes we grasp so tightly to things that we think are essential about how we live our lives. And yet, what the Spirit is doing in the Nicodemus story and what the Spirit wants to do in us sometimes is, paradoxically, the opposite of what the Spirit did in the Ezekiel reading. The Spirit wants to pull us apart a little bit. We hold on to these connections we've made so tight, but before the Spirit can work, the Spirit needs to pull us apart a little bit so that the Spirit can move us to the next place. And so Jesus says, I have many things to teach you right now that you cannot bear, but there will come a moment when if you're open, when if you're willing to be broken open a little bit, then the Spirit can weave and work to take you to the next place. These are great readings for the transitional time that our parish is in. You and I have been together many, many years. And we've learned to do things a certain way, and we've come to depend on each other a certain way. But it is right that at a certain time, the Spirit can begin to work in our community in a new way. It's true for any transition in your life or any moment in your life that, that the Spirit can move so that you shall live, really live. So on this Feast of Pentecost, you may not hear a rushing wind. Tongues of flame it may not be dancing on top of your head, but know that the Holy Spirit is at work. 
trust that the Holy Spirit is at work. And then, as a person, as a community, take that next step and be with other people. Be with this broken world that's lying on the valley floor like dry bones. Be with those who are, be, be with those who are so certain of their way to, to help them open a little bit to the reality that the power of the Spirit can work in their lives to take them to a deeper kind of life than they ever could have imagined. So that's the last word I leave with you now from my last sermon at St. Paul's. It's my heartfelt prayer that you will know life in the season ahead. That if you're feeling a little bit like your dry bones on the floor and feeling some grief and fear about what's next, the Holy Spirit will bring those pieces together in a new way and will give you life. And if you're just feeling like, hey, we've got it all together, we're making it, watch out. If you allow yourself to be disassembled, the Holy Spirit will teach you new things that you could not bear yet, that you weren't ready to receive yet, to lead you to life. And so as I leave you on this day, my prayer is, may God lead you to life. You will live.